welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson, and it's a special edition of the Gridiron Report. It is the big picture, or in other words, my main takeaways from Texas Tech head coach Matt Wells' Monday press conference. And, of course, he does these uh, press conferences, just like every coach you know, uh, in the uh, country, uh, on game week. Every game week he has a press conference, and uh, his is Monday mornings at around 11.15. And uh, this is the press conference where Coach Wells is, you know, talking about the 31-21 loss in Manhattan, Kansas, you know, to Kansas State, and also, you know, previewing uh, Iowa State, the upcoming game uh, in Ames, Iowa, against the Cyclones, who are two and one and two and zero in Big 12 all of a sudden. Uh, so this, I believe, this is the only instance of the season of this, you know, Corona season, this 10-game schedule, where the Red Raiders are playing uh, back-to-back road games, and it, you know, it's asking a lot. It's it's a tough little stretch here, um, you know. At Kansas State, and then coming up against Iowa State. Now they'll have a bye uh, after after this game against Iowa State. But uh, it's you know it's a challenge. Um, first two road games of the season. First one obviously didn't go the way uh, the Red Raiders wanted. But uh, you know we actually had a pretty good media session, pretty good uh, press conference on Monday. Uh, I had the opportunity to ask Coach Wells three questions, and honestly, his answers from those three questions were my main takeaways from the press conference on Monday. It doesn't always shake out that way, but it did. Today and uh, you know the first thing I think to me um, it was the most important was what's the deal with the quarterback situation. Uh, Coach Will said that Alan Bowman it didn't break anything and it doesn't appear to be anything that's going to be or tear anything that's going to be uh, long term for Alan Bowman who got hit. He got hit, came out of the game in the first quarter against Kansas State, for those who didn't see. Uh, it was kind of a low hit. It was actually a late hit. Um, it was uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Um, Bowman tried to come back in the second half, but couldn't really put pressure on, like, put enough weight on his leg. It was, uh, Wells confirmed it was an ankle injury So for, for Bowman. So, you know, I, my question for Wells was, okay, they, you know, that's he confirmed all that, but so Bowman was the starting quarterback, obviously, coming out of camp. And all the coaches have been saying he's really separated himself. But then Columbia goes in there, and he played well, very well. So I asked Coach, you know, is Bowman still the starter, assuming he's healthy or when he's healthy enough to play? Is Bowman still the starter, or, or did Columbia do enough? Has he shown enough to kind of overtake or to overtake Bo- uh, Bowman as the starter? You know, Wells wasn't going to answer. I, I didn't expect him to be, oh, well, it's – it's Columbia for sure. But I tell you what, he did say everyone in the building uh, was really impressed, or most of the people in the building was really impressed with Columbia's performance. He obviously knows the offense. He liked what he saw from Columbia after he settled down early on. and uh, that He was noncommittal. He said basically, like if he had said Bowman is the still our guy, you know, just because he got hurt doesn't mean he's our starter, then you know that tells you, okay, it is Bowman. But that's not what Coach said. He said we'll evaluate this. And we'll see who is the actual starter as the week goes along. So I took that not just to be gamesmanship and that Bowman's going to be the starter. I think Columbia, I think there's a good chance Columbia's going to be the starter moving forward. The offense have more rhythm. He brings more uh, with his legs. And also, uh, you know, bottom line is Bowman can't stay healthy. So how, how, how many more of these practice reps and just reps in general, uh, starters reps, are you going to uh, – to, to use on Bowman, who just, I mean, he gets hurt a lot. Uh, so you I, I think that plays a part as well. But honestly, I feel like the offense looked better with Columbia anyway. So uh, I, I want to see what it can do moving forward if he's given those reps and he starts building more chemistry with his teammates because I think they have something there with him, especially with that, not just his running ability, but also, you know, I, I like what he was doing in the passing game. So... To me, that was the biggest takeaway. The next biggest takeaway is I asked Coach Wells point blank. I said, look, to me, this is the question surrounding the the Texas Tech football program right now. But, you know, last year, kind of the big big picture takeaway was, you know, they lost so many close games. And now this year, I mean, you know, every game's come down to the end. And the last two games, Tech had leads in the fourth quarter, obviously infamously 15 over UT and with three minutes left. But even against Kansas State last week, they were up 21-17 with, I believe, 11 minutes to go approximately, uh, you know, and lost. So my question was, how do they, how do they overcome this? How do they get over the hill uh, and, and break through, so to speak? 
And Wells said, you know, he answered, it was actually a really lengthy answer. Um, I encourage you to check it out on YouTube. Um, but we also have, no, I, I have uh, notes on that as well. Um, notes and quotes on, on Inside the Red Raiders on the, on the boards. But bottom line is, he said there's no magic fairy dust, which I understand. He said um, he feels the team is really close to breaking through. And then he feels like when, he, when they do break down that wall, go through that door, they're gonna, they want to burst it open. They want to, it to become you know, the norm the other way that when, like Kansas State, to be, he didn't say this, but to be honest, like what it reminds me of what he described was Kansas State or Iowa State, that when it gets down close, you expect them to win the game. You know? um, and that's, Tech has been the antithesis of that. And he brought up that that's, it was, you know, he said, look, it's been like that for years, and it has been. You know, he's not just blaming somebody else. I mean, I, if you look at the results, this is, there's a pattern there. Uh, before certainly under Wells, but before Wells got here as well, and he said that uh, you know it's going to take time. That they that he always saw it as a rebuild. That it was going to take time to rebuild the roster after all the attrition that had happened uh, prior to his his arrival, uh, and that they needed to get you know their guys in in place. Which you know on one hand I could hear people say, hey, that sounds like an excuse, and it is. But on the other hand, I, I think he's right. So I think. Somewhere between it being like just an excuse and reality is where it lies. For me, anyways, in my humble opinion. The bottom line is somebody, anybody, needs to step up and make a play in crunch time that's going to decide the game for Texas Tech, and then they build from there. I'm not saying they're going to go on a stretch where they win every close game, but at least when they have that confidence, hey, we were here, we were in the foxhole together, and we were able to pull out the victory because they don't have that right now, you know, other than Houston Baptist, which... Let's face it, I mean, everyone had a sour taste in their mouth after barely beating Houston Baptist. So you can make an argument for them being 0-3. You can make an argument for them being 3-0. Um, uh, I think I could win that argument no matter which way I debate it, to be honest. <laughs> All the time you know, we put in, the, our staff puts into this. But uh, I, that is the question, is when are they going to get over that? Because that, that, there is a psychological hill or mountain or whatever that they're facing because when they went up 21 to 17 against Kansas State I said to myself I wonder how long this is going to last I think I said it out loud uh and it didn't last very long and it also had me wondering like are, are the pl are the players and coaches having these same feelings they have to be right it's got to be in their heads and so this kind of thing just takes on a life of its own so I don't know if the answer is Columbia maybe he'll be a gamer we have no idea yet we just saw his debut we not even he hadn't even made his first start yet so maybe he's a gamer and a guy who could kind of pick them up uh, out of this and kind of lead them to a new uh, mantra, a new type of psyche in terms of late game uh, play. But it's not just offense too. So you know they got to get better and they can feed on it off each other. They can really feed like offense make a play, then the defense make a play, and the special teams. But right now it seems like there's always some element to the game holding them back. And it's been all three phases. And it's been blame the coaching staff, absolutely. Blame the players, absolutely. So uh, you know, and you got to give credit to the opposition as well in these cases. So it's been a number of things, and something has to. You got to break it. You got to break the cycle somehow. And I think I feel like we're all just waiting for that to happen. And, not only Coach Wells, but Tony Bradford after him in the same press conference basically said the same things. They feel so close. This team hasn't given up on the staff or each other. They're more invested than he's seen than, than they were even last year. That, but it has to happen. They got to break through. You know, and, and, and they have to break through first and foremost before you can start building upon that. The last huge takeaway, actually, uh, Coach Wells mentioned recruiting and it made me think I've been meaning to ask him this. So while we had access to him, I feel like this was the best setting I was probably going to get. I asked him about how, because the, the 2021 class, there's a lot of consternation there, and it's really complicated right now. There are a lot of people with a lot more commits than Texas Tech. Texas Tech only has nine commits, like regular commits on their class, seven of which are high school, two are junior college. Online is that's a really small class. One thing that we've mentioned on the board, but for those who don't know, a lot of these uh, transfers that came in, the Colin Schooler, the Tyree Wilson, the Henry Columbia, all those guys like walked on because Texas Tech was out of initial counters, 25 scholarships to give. They actually ran out of scholarships when you combine the high school class, the junior college, the regular transfers, and the gra other grad transfers that were able to get scholarships. But they're going to count on scholarships for the 2021 class, Baron Morton, the four-star quarterback, his class. 
the current one that they're uh, looking to sign and bring in on the next signing day. Uh, so, I mean, they're, they've already actually already used 14 of their initial counts. So that still leaves 11 open. And I asked Coach Wells, look, you have that, but you also have this blanket waiver, which is allowing uh, several, you know, the seniors, if they want to, they can come back. And it works out, and the coaches want them back and all that. Um, so a number of senior, seniors could come back, which there's an 85 scholarship limit cap. And there hasn't been word necessarily of if it's going to be expanded or not. That's the assumption, but it hasn't been confirmed yet, at least to my knowledge. So... And then if they do, how much can you afford? Because, I mean, I don't know. I don't remember what the scholarship is worth, but it's a lot. It's a lot of money um, in order to, you know, the feed and house and all that stuff. All that goes into a scholarship in a year for for a football player, uh, it's, ex it's expensive. So how much can Tech afford? Especially we're talking about during the, you know, corona era where Tech has already laid off 20, eliminated 20 other positions, and then imposed uh, pay cuts on a lot of their employees. So, I mean, it's not like, Money's just growing on trees um, with with the, with the big loss they had at just at the gate alone uh, from the football game. So there's a lot to sort through. Coach Wells basically said it has affected a lot in terms of their numbers. But not only that, like they don't know. Like there's three or four seniors that say, "Oh yeah, coach, I'm coming back next year." They they feel good about them coming back. You know, like. Okay, this we know these guys are coming back. But then there's a whole other group. I think, I don't remember exactly how many uh, seniors there are, but uh, it's double digits. And in terms of if they're coming back or not, that's left to be determined. And he said that's a conversation they'll have like in December about about that. Um, and so that will affect, okay, do we, he said they're also going to leave, always going to leave a couple of spots at least for grad transfers because they've had so much success uh, going that route, and that, those guys, some of those guys don't come until you know summer or spring, uh, you know, really later, really actually after or towards the very end of a recruiting cycle. So it's complicated, as you can tell. But basically, after they determine who is coming back and who isn't in December, that will tell them, okay, wait, wait we need a guy right now to come in as a stopgap, you know, uh, a, gra a, a transfer. Or can they go the high school route and actually bring them in, develop them, and wait a couple years before they, you know, throw them out there to the wolves? Uh, so there's a lot to be determined by this, this this blanket waiver, which is great. I'm glad they did it. It's not, you know, everybody is getting. And for those who don't know exactly what that is, it's basically that everyone who's playing this year in football, this no matter if you do play or what, if your conference is playing, when it's playing, whatever. Uh, this season isn't going to count towards your eligibility. So it's basically like a free season in terms of eligibility. So that's good. I like it. Everyone likes it. Everyone's in agreement. But it's going to complicate things on the recruiting trail. And Matt Wills addressed some of that, some of what he could answer to as of October, early October. So that's going to be interesting. We'll be all over at InsideTheRoadRaiders.com. With that, I want to say thank you for watching, and until next time.